Andrew's not carving from a normal man. He's taking a great man making him better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's our goal. Like, even when I get hate online, my real life is so good. How could I ever be upset with a little bit of, of hate on the internet? Yeah. All they do is make me more popular. The more popular I get, the more money I make. Yeah. The more money I make, more I get to take care of the people I love. What's really important in, in those conversations, Seth, especially when things can go left, mm -hmm. when they can go the wrong way, is to be there and, and fully be able to look them in the eyes and hear what they're saying mm -hmm. and be able to go back and forth with them in a way that they don't have to feel challenged mm -hmm. and that you're actually in control. I'll, I'll lower the tone of my voice. I'll start talking like this. If you're in a bad position in your life, mm -hmm changing your atmosphere could be could fix every problem you think you have you got a drug problem go to another city where that's just not around you see if you're okay yeah dubai go yeah there. go to dubai yeah go to dubai yeah, and go to choice yeah <laughs> i love it i love it's it true, though. Welcome to the Sample Podcast, guys, the number one social dynamics podcast in the world. Today with me, I have a very, very special guest with me. We tried in Dubai, wasn't able to do it, but now we're in Miami, Florida. Today's guest is from the small town of Denham Springs, Louisiana. He's the founder of Red Iron Construction, which he's been running for the past 13 years. He's a real estate connoisseur. He is a social media personality and one of the most influential people over the last two years alongside Andrew and Tristan Tate. Please welcome Mr. Justin Waller. Glad to be here. Thank you we for coming. made it happen, bro. We did, we did. Yeah. Now, the very first question I want to bring you back to was this quote that you said, and it says, construction was the only way we knew how to make doctor money. Yeah. Take us, take us back. How old was Justin then? Oh, man, I, I think that it really hit me sometime around 13 or 14 years old. Okay. Um, we had a house fire in junior high. I was in junior high and we went and stayed for the guy that my stepdad worked for. Mm -hmm. And this dude for Baton Rouge, this dude was a big boss. Like it was like, we all had our own bedroom. Like we got new bedrooms when we moved out of the house fire house. You, you know like, what I'm saying? Damn. Like, damn, I got my own space and shit. <laughs> guy had a basketball court inside and I'm like, man, this dude's just putting up metal buildings. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it, it kind of hit me there and it was like, man, there's like doctors, there's like BMWs in this neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know. It's your first time with well. Yeah, to like see it. And um, that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot in the South, you know. Like mm -hmm. having a BMW is nice, but like really even for like the richest kid in school, mm -hmm. like nobody had a, nobody was driving a BMW to my high school, you know. Yeah. You could have a really cool like Z71 pickup truck. Okay. Yep. Or an F-150 or maybe a Mustang. A Mustang would be like as bad, as bad boys <laughs> it got at my high school. But... You know, to see to see these people like pulling up in like legit, you know, Mercedes and BMWs and stuff in this neighborhood. Now he had a big diesel out front of him, but I just knew that he was in this neighborhood, and there were no doctors and lawyers in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So the only exposure I, I saw to people that made decent money, even around the people that I was around in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. was the guy that had a really really nice truck. He still had a shitty trailer, <laughs> but he was in construction. Okay, and and that was my exposure you know, to, I guess, the difference for the first time. The wealth you know, disparity between yeah, rich like and poor. Like, yeah, the socioeconomic, you know, okay. the difference. Because At 13, before that, which, is like, which is young, was, too. Yeah, and before that, uh, in, in, in kindergarten, on uh, actually a little before kindergarten, for about five years, I lived in a mostly black neighborhood. And mm -hmm. when I say mostly, like, I was, like, one of the only white kids, like, by a long shot. And then moving from a little town called Baker, Louisiana, mm -hmm. to Denham Springs, um, it was just going from an apartment complex to kind of like a like a like not the best you know either trailer or mm. or even a house we lived in the house at, at sometimes but there was just the neighborhood's completely different yeah. you know and so when i went into that neighborhood after after that house fire happened uh it was uh it was very eye opening to see what this guy had done with with just construction so mm. um that's, that's the that's first, the first time. time it hit me. Yeah, You're like, damn. Because sure. I, could, yeah. I can imagine, like, you know, w w when I did some, some research on you, I really understood there's been a pattern in your life. And I'm going to go through a couple of examples that that Ooh. pattern is, is really, really good. So first of all, um, the, the very first one was understanding that, you know, at times in your life, you had to hunt for your food. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think that's part of life. Hunting is a part of life. It's always going to be. So, so talk, like, is this around the age where you were traveling and you were moving and, and it did get to that low point? There? Are you talking about like literally like deer hunting for food yeah, and fishing? Yeah, with you, with you. Yeah. So listen, man, let me tell you something. 
you want free mate range or you want to beat whole foods go deer hunting kill a deer <laughs> or kill all your tags and yep. you fill your freezer you'll have meat for the rest of the year mm -hmm. so one thing we would do um is eat a lot of deer meat at home mm -hmm. we'd go deer hunting you know kill a few deer and that would be what we would eat for a while now Maybe we could have brought meat from the store, but it was definitely cheaper not to. To do that, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of deer roasts. Um, to a, um, well, a lot of a lot of your friends uh, contribute that to the way that you're built. They reckon that you know you've grown <laughs> up on this. Maybe you know, like a strong animal that you know bison, elk, you know all of that deer, a strong animal, and that's kind of your makeup is because of that. You know, a young kid probably wouldn't be eating that. Could be. I you know one thing that I, I feel like I feel like people either say steroids or genetics when they see somebody that's built well. Yeah. They don't ever want to be like, you know, oh, 20 years in the gym. Yeah, yeah. You know what that I'm saying? That doesn't sound entertaining to anybody. Yeah, yeah. It's not entertaining at all, and it's super boring. I mean, I went to the gym today. Yep. You know, like I'm 37. And, you got to do it. And I'm constantly putting a wig on that relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, like you date a girl too long, you want her to get a blonde wig. Like, yeah. I'm... I've been boxing a whole lot. Yep. I've been doing, you know, different types of workouts or I'll change gyms, uh -huh. whatever I can do to keep that relationship current. And that's interesting because someone of your stature and with your height, you've already got the advantage of a lot of men. Yeah. Right? Someone for me, 5'7", just on, non-negotiable. I don't have a choice. Right. And, and the and advantage so you, for you is you can look bigger faster. The disadvantage for me is I have to work really hard to look big mm -hmm. you know, really or otherwise right. I look skinny. But, dude, I weigh 230 pounds, and yeah. people don't know that about me. Like, yeah. my legs are really big. I've got a lot of years, and i got mature muscle. Yep, which is. And so I always tell the young guys, like, man, listen, I, I'm all about you doing business. Put fitness first right now, mm -hmm. though, because it's going to make business so much easier for you. You talk about that, yeah. Yeah, man. It's just, it makes, every, it makes, your, clo it makes your fashion better. Yep. Because now you can have simple style mm -hmm. instead of dressing up like a fucking nerd wearing a bow tie somewhere. Or trying to do all these crazy colors or have to do a bunch of jewelry. But I don't do any of that shit. <laughs> watch t shirt. The watch yeah. might cost 50 grand. The t shirt might cost 10 bucks. I don't give a shit. Because if you're jacked, nobody gives a fuck. They're like, style. I like it. One of my favorite things that ever happens to me is I'll go somewhere and some dude will be like, hey, bro, why are you so dressed up? And I'm like, bro, we're wearing the same outfit. We're both wearing jeans and we're both wearing a white button up. Yep. Mine's just tailored and I look like the fucking mannequin. <laughs> Suck it. Well, there's, yeah. a, there's a quote here too that you said. Let me see if I can get it up, which just says, the suit should be simple, right? Yeah. It's the man that makes it scream. Thousand percent, bro. There's a man in a blue suit and then there's a man in a blue yeah. suit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it hits different. Yeah, it hits different. Mm -hmm. It might write out on paper the same, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. You can capture a whole room with just fitness and basic style. That stature almost. And stature, yeah, yeah. Because, because you've earned it. You know you, you know that you look good. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that will, before they even meet me, I've not spoken, they never heard me spoke. This is like in my past, where yep. before, before like I was like on the internet so mm -hmm. much. I had people come up to me and said, man, before I knew you, I fucking hated you. Mm -hmm. It's because I was walking in a room and I knew I'd done what I was supposed to do. I was standing too tall. My chin was too high. Yep. And they automatically assumed I was fucking arrogant. Mm -hmm. And they would come apologize to me. I, it well, would happen in college did. a lot. You know, man, I used to hate you until I got to know you. And it's just a part of life, man. You're gonna, you get to pick your problems, yeah? Yeah. You know, there's going to be people that hate you. I'd much rather people hate me because I'm sexy as fuck when I walk in the room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a good problem to yeah, have. Like, yeah, that's my kind of problem. You're so... Man, I, I truly believe that any young man should really, really handle fitness because it, it, it pays him everywhere. Mm. It pays him in his mind to be sharp. It pays him when he walks in the room mm. to be able to get attention from not only women but even, even other men because men respect it because they know it's discipline. They want to get in shape. There's no man on the planet that was like, if I could snap my fingers right now and be – you know, jacked with a yeah. six pack would not be <laughs> no like, one would, yeah. Yeah, bro, he'd do it. <laughs> Every guy would do it. So men understand how hard that is, mm -hmm. right? So you get a certain amount of respect there, which also makes business easier, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I think there's one thing that can't be bought, no matter what. No. no. It's like you could have, you know, I'm sure there's presidents and this and that have got the best gyms, yep. best equipment. 
Still yeah, you can't it. buy it. Yeah, you can't buy it, and it makes your style better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you don't right. have to be so flamboyant and 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 glitz and glamour about your style mm-hmm. because you look good in just a basic white shirt and and a jacket. Yeah, you got that. You got that it, reverse it, triangle effect. Right. You got that whole that whole one point six ratio thing, mm-hmm. dude. And it's just on point. You bro. just look good. Yeah. And, and going on that, which is a really really good segue for this, you recently were on a a panel. Yeah, the yeah, Jubilee, yeah. Um, the YouTube channel. And uh, the video is called uh, Are Men Superior to Women? Alphas vs. Betas. And, you know. Yeah, I hate that it was called that. It was not yeah. a great title, but, you know. No, but it was smart. It was smart of them. They, they I, and I knew what the title, and to be fair, I knew what the title was before. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's cringy, but that's going to get some clicks. Let's yeah, do it's it. going to yeah, be. Yeah. And you're in, the, you're in the, t- the thumbnail and this and that. Of they course I'm in the you. thumbnail. And Bro, they, I'm everybody's favorite enemy right now. So good. Hate me. I like it. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed the podcast with Justin. If you're looking to level up your life in 2023, 2024, you want a fruitful social network, you want the attraction with the girls that you want, and you want to be a man in his prime that's just absolutely crushing life, all you got to do is click the link below, book a call, and we'll be able to create a custom plan for you and get you the results in your social life, as well as your networking, as well as your dating life that you've always wanted to. Now let's get back to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, caught the eyes of, of Brett Cooper, obviously. She, yeah, it she, did. She did. She did, did a lot of that. Now, yeah. uh, really, really good segue from what you just said because it was interesting on that podcast. You know, what I do for a living is teach social dynamics. Okay. So I, I read people. I understand. I teach social skills and that to, to men. Very similar to a mutual friend of Michael Sartain. You know, I've yeah. been I've known him for eight nine years now. And nice. We were we we're intertwined. So, what was interesting about the podcast was the social dynamics at play in that because it was the alpha and the beta, right? Mm-hmm. And, and here we go. You had uh, eight men in a room for the guys listening uh, and the girls in a room all debating a heated topic. And somehow you had all the energy on you. Yeah. You had, uh, you know, you had other guys there, uh, you know, alphas or betas, but everyone was placating towards you and your answers. Yeah. So talk to me about, first of all, your state, your frame control, which is something that asking a lot of people doing a lot of research you've either developed or had for a lot of years this ability to control a room control different people and how they reacted to you yeah i don't have any training okay but i do believe in carrying yourself a certain way Mm -hmm. and speaking with conviction and looking somebody dead in the eyes Mm -hmm. and i think i was open to hear them fully Mm -hmm. and once somebody sometimes people make the mistake of forcing their opinion onto somebody so much that mm. they can no longer hear what you're saying. Yep. And so if you can sit with them and hear them and then go back and forth at them, I think the natural alpha in the room, a word I truly hate, a cringy yeah. word, <laughs> tends to come out. Now, whether mm-hmm. that was me that day, that, now you're going to have to make, because I've not watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm going to have to go watch it. But yeah. Um, it was interesting the way that just the body, like, you know, I don't right. like to look at it, but you can, you can see it. You can see the body language. Yeah. You can see how there's like an energy vortex and you're right. just the, the, the gravity that's sucking the room, right? Uh, some people have that, yeah. you know. Well, you uh, had it on that. You definitely go watch yeah, that. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's funny. That's something that Andrew told me I had once. And, mm-hmm. and I believe it to be true. And I've believed that to be true long before even Andrew mm-hmm. said it to me. But... What's really important in, in those conversations, especially when things can go left and mm-hmm. they can go the wrong way, is to be there and, and fully be able to look them in the eyes and hear what they're saying mm-hmm. and be able to go back and forth with them in a way that they don't have to feel challenged mm-hmm. and that you're actually in control. I'll, I'll lower the tone of my voice. I'll start talking like this so they can hear me mm-hmm. instead of attacking them because I don't need to attack them. Mm-hmm. I just want them to hear what I'm saying. Right. And so a lot of times the flexion in your voice Mm-hmm. can do a lot for you your posture can always do a lot for you mm-hmm. eye contact is critical yeah. eye contact in business to me is one thing that builds trust because if i can sure. look in a man's eyes and he doesn't have to have like some kind of weird reaction to oh, that like, uh, i know uh, i yeah. yeah more than likely i can probably trust him mm-hmm. and in that moment i wanted to make those gentlemen feel like they could trust me to have a real conversation and yep. so we did mm-hmm. and one one thing that i did hear that brit said um was that she thought it was very cordial and she appreciated how how the conversation went Mm -hmm. and that a lot of people in the comments said that despite the fact that she doesn't like how tight my pants are and that i don't (laughs) button my jacket and i would respond to brit by saying number one you're cute as a button number two girls only hit the boys they like at recess bro (laughs) so i mean because that other son of a bitch on that show was handsome 
yeah, super handsome dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, I mean, but she called I, him a nerd once, <laughs> and, and that was it. And he ain't a nerd, so. But no, you, you, you definitely did that. And it's great that you'll go back and watch it because it was yeah, just a little I do point. need to go watch it, man. It, it was a great, great thing. Now, one of the things, as I said before, you've had this reoccurring pattern in your life, you know, hard things. And, and it seems like <clears throat> someone of your stature, you've gone through a lot. You know, you had to have to be who you are. One of the things I really got was a, a, a critical thing that happened in uh, 2005. You're a freshman at the University of Louisiana and you got red shirted. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Then 2006 rolls rolls around. Everyone, uh, if I had to, I had to research because I'm not from. Yeah, I was away, bro. Red shirt. I was just like, what does that mean? And so apparently, yeah. for the guys that don't know, you don't get to play that year. Yeah. At all. You, you get to sit in the bench. Yeah. You just sit there and watch your teammates do that. 2006 rolls around. You played every game. Yeah. And then 2007, you were a significant part of that team. Yeah. And a, and a big contributor. Those three years, it seems like this is like foreshadowing every every major thing that happens in your life. So talk to us about that and talk to us how that's affected not just that event, but the way that you've dealt with adversity. Because, you know, 2005, you know, you're young, you're, you know, you want to do the best you can in yeah. university. Yeah. So let me, let me, I've never told this story online before. I played at a high school that was a basketball school. We had a McDonald's All-American. Okay. His name was Tasman Mitchell. He's a stud. He's a stud to this day. I love him. Like we talk a good bit. He graduated with us that year. Mm -hmm. We were a horrible football program. I think we won five games in four years. I did not get recruited. There was no tape getting sent out. We didn't have a recruiting coordinator. Yeah. I had, instead of like chopping up a highlight video, I just picked one of my best games and just sent it to that school. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a roster spot and I had to walk on. Okay. I got redshirted. Yep. Everybody else on the team, not only now, the other kids on the team that are redshirted, they have scholarships. That means they're getting their school paid for. Mm -hmm. I was not. I was cleaning barbecue pits during the summer to yeah. pay rent and have a place to go. At Texas, State yeah, Brazil? It, well, it was in North Louisiana, Monroe. Okay. What ended up happening is I got on that fucking field and I fought like a dog. Mm -hmm. And they ended up having to give me a scholarship because I got on the field before the scholarship players. And they gave me a scholarship after, after one camp. Damn. So um, I really had to fight. I knew I was going to get redshirted. Mm -hmm. I was there just to go to practice because it was very transactional for me because I knew that football would pay for everything. And so I took that opportunity and, and I turned it into a scholarship and I got paid the rest of the way out. That 2007 season, I tore my labrum, and that's where all my shoulder surgeries came from. But that's also the season I started against Nick Saban in Alabama and we beat them which was the biggest win in school history. Damn, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, I already knew I, I, I had a dog fight in front of me, mm -hmm. but I had no choice. And a lot of times I say burn the boats, and I believe in burning the boat, and that's the only thing I knew at that time. That was mm -hmm. the only consciousness I had mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, YouTube wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah. YouTube was nothing yeah. compared to, like in 2005, YouTube was nothing compared to what it is now. I didn't have the real world out there giving me another way out. I didn't have, you know, these influencers out here that could help almost father me in a way. Mm -hmm. I didn't have this. So I only knew of one fight I could go fight, and that was to go play ball in college and get a degree for free somehow and hopefully get a job in Dallas. Now, I got the football thing handled because it was on me. Yep. But I did graduate in 2009. So, you know. It, it, it turned it, it turned into another it turned into another dog fight, <laughs> down again. you know. But I've not turned one down yet, so uh, I'm super proud of that young man, that, that younger awesome. version of me, because that was my way out. Mm -hmm. There was no way for me to get out. Otherwise, I'd, I would have had to go work at the plants or some shit. Yeah, and I didn't want that in my life, and so I chose to go uh, fight every day at practice instead of a game, instead of getting any glory, just bang at practice and just wreck people's shit until they had to put me on the field. And that's yeah, what I did. There was no other option except yeah, for there was no one there. put me on the fucking field. And that's what happened. And as I said, it's foreshadowing because the, the story that, that one of the stories, if you, if you said, Justin Waller, what is the story? It happened to be the construction story. Oh yeah. And so I as I said, job, everything yeah. seems to be foreshadowing. You know, you don't, you have this, this dog in you, you have this, yeah. I ain't going to quit. I got a bunch of dog in me. That's for sure. In fact, I got way more dog in me than I am intelligent or mm -hmm. like, and I tell people all the time, it's like, I had this guy, he wrote in the comments, he's like, you're not Elon Musk, you're not Steve Jobs. And I, and I thought to myself when he said that, I was like, very true. 
Mm -hmm. and I probably never will be, but I'm gonna tell you something. The difference between my life today mm -hmm. and my life then, and probably the guy that made that comment's life, is a light years different. Yeah. Light years. I have true freedom, you know. I am not Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. but I got some fucking dog in me. Yeah. And anybody that's got dog in them will be able to fight long enough to, to create freedom in their life. And really, outside of that, what else could you possibly want? You're not, never going to spend the money anyway. Mm. So it's just going to go back. One of the things we talk about this program with my life has been catalysts. And a catalyst is a point or a, an event or a circumstance in your life that vers like you know diverts you into two paths. You've got like a yes or no or a right, right or left. Yeah, yeah. Right? And for me, I've been I've been I've hit, I've hit all of them. Right point, right time. I've made the right decision, right. which is fantastic. Obviously, that you're always going to have some some ones you don't. A catalyst for you that not the not many of the people would know. What would that be? A point in in life where the position you are in now, you can kind of bring it back to this one point where you said, if Justin did that, he wouldn't have been here. If there, if there is a one point or if there's multiple points in multiple catalysts in your life that have brought you to, to here. Uh, if you're talking about the person that gets stopped in the streets in Miami every day is mm -hmm. joining the war room. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll just, I took the boys to dinner the other day and some guy recognized me and the next thing you know, the chef's sending stuff out. And then the waiter comes to me and he's like, yo, I'm getting a lot of pressure in the back to make sure I treat you right. And, and like, next time you, will be, you won't be put at this table, we're gonna put you at this other table and all this other mm -hmm. crazy stuff. All this stuff, this right here, what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. war room. War room. I joined the war room and I started to get more consciousness. I started mm -hmm. to get more worldly. I started learning about second passports. Mm -hmm. I started lear learning about you know, style in a different way. Yep. Like I was wearing, I was wearing cowboy boots. Yeah. And, yeah. and I will still wear cowboy <laughs> boots with my blazers. I do. But the war room was a place where I was being opened up to more consciousness and I was being held accountable in a completely different way. Mm. And I like fire. Yeah. So, and I like, you know what yeah, I'm saying? It's a fight. Because yeah. it feels like a sword. Like the, the war room is a yeah. sword where it's like you're getting sharpened either way. Yeah, you either can't way. You e that to. or you're going to die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of guys take for granted that if you're in a bad position in your life, mm -hmm. changing your atmosphere could, be, could fix every problem you think you have. You got a drug problem? Go to another city where that shit's not around you. See mm -hmm. if you're okay. Yeah, Dubai. Go yeah. There. Go to Dubai. Yeah. Go to Dubai. Yeah, and get a choice. Right? You think you should be doing, uh, you think you should be working out and you don't, you don't turn it up, hire a trainer that you super respect and you would never no show on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or move to Miami. Right. Everyone's jacked. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, if, if you, if you think that you want to be an entrepreneur and you're some small town or something like that, you know, spend your time with YouTubers and, and like create, make that your friend group. You know, you don't need to be talking anyway. You need to be listening, mm -hmm. you know, and I did that for a long time in Louisiana. Then I got to the point where I was like, no. Louisiana doesn't do it anymore, mm -hmm. you know. Go to Miami. Yep. And now, and now there's more consciousness. So you're always gonna be trying to find more consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so, when I when I joined the War Room, I started to gain more consciousness. I started to become more worldly. I started to get really big into geopolitics and understanding mm -hmm. how things really, really run in this world. And from there, it's just been a moonshot because I was already re ready to work hard. Yeah. You you say that that you you had your life already set up. Oh, my life was super set up. Yeah. Like I came, like I was a really good candidate. Yeah. Like I, I already had six bed. pack. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I was already making good money. Yeah, they can't I, say no to you. you yeah, know? like you know what I'm saying. It's like it, there was nothing, there was nothing for them to do. I say this about the war room all the time. Mm -hmm. The war room does not mold men out of clay. The war room molds granite. Mm -hmm. It attracts granite. We're we're not carving from from clay or wood yeah. or anything like that. We take granite, sharpen that and polish it. Refine it. Yeah, yeah, refine it. You have to become granite. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the war room. And then you become a piece of art. You know what I'm saying? I like, like that, yeah. That's where it really, it really gets forged. It's like, it, Andrew's not carving from a normal man. He's taking a great man and making him better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's our goal. Yeah. That's why we have events uh, like Shooter's Event penetrating mm -hmm. the elite. Yep. You know, that event is not a cheap event. Mm -mm. but he needs granite to be at that event. Mm. That kind of material of man, 
He doesn't. He doesn't need a stone man there. He needs a granite man there, so he can create a piece sure. of art. Yeah, you well, know what I'm a lot of people need other people that are sharp, like yeah. with them. You know, and I can I test. I'm sure you have people around you that are just, you know, not only Andrew and, and, and Tristan and Sterling, but like just sharpness. You know, yeah. people that might not be that figure. Right. They're also fucking, you know, amazing. Dude, there's guys in the war room <clears throat> that nobody knows about that are world class. Yeah. World <laughs> class. Like they just don't want to be multiple on languages, yeah. different countries, flying all over the place. Like they are missing nothing. You know, the war room makes very, very complete men. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the best group in the world, man. Mm. It's the best group in the world. Yeah, well, n- nothing other, no, no other group like it kind of thing. No, you know, zero. They, People ask me, they're like, oh, when are you going to start a group? Fucking never. Never, yeah. Never. I'm committed to this, man. I love this. Oh, I know people in Tiger 21, you know, the networking business. And it just is. No, oh, bro. Or, or, like or even, even Soho House. Like, all this, all this, these BNI groups, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it's it. It's true, though. It's true. Oh, that's that's amazing. All right. Um, one of the things, too, also a great thing about, about you is you talk about uh, leaders walk among their people, and you're someone. So how important is your reputation to you? And it's one thing I, t- I tell all my students. Your reputation is, is quite important, but in, in what ways do you manage yours, and in what ways right. do you kind of not protect it, but... My reputation is only important to me with the people that I love. Okay. Everybody else can get fucked. <laughs> Truly. The comment section, fuck The up, comment yeah. section, like I don't even get a lot of negative comments. Like I, I'm getting a lot of hate right now sure. because of something that happened on a podcast. But I don't hate that lady. Yeah, no. At all. I love that woman. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like I got no hate in my heart, bro. Yeah, you got love for everything. Like, yeah. and, and that's the thing. It's like, even when I get hate online, my real life is so good. How could I ever be upset with a little bit of a hate on the internet? Yeah. All they do is make me more popular. The more popular I get, the more money I make. Yeah. The more money I make, the more I get to take care of the people I love. Mm-hmm. So if the people I love know who I am and they're, the people that are in my group, the family I've built around my businesses and, and the people I care about, yep. I could give a Blueberry Baker's fuck what anybody else thinks about me. Mm-hmm. I really could care less. And it's such a healthy, wonderful place to be for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you, like, can, lo- when you can love all the tension. Bro, yeah. Or like I sit back with my family and the people I actually care about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't getting get too fucked about what No, you. they're laughing. Yeah. Bro, we're all laughing. I'm like, y'all want to get another steak? Like, what are we doing? Tomahawk now. Yeah. And, and it's men, women. It's people that work for me. They're, they're, they're significant other. My I fucking, I got a baby in my hand. You know, Thomas is there. Yeah. You know, Uncle Tom. <laughs> you know? just I mean, it's just, it's just like I – could not care less man because the people that i love love me and they know who i am and it is the most freeing thing that has ever happened in my life is like going on the internet and just see like just experiencing having people not like you yep you know it's it's a it's a it's a weird and wonderful world it's a wonderful thing because it's like my life is so good this doesn't even bother me Mm -hmm. and that's a lot of people's biggest fear yeah now it doesn't it doesn't hurt it that any amount of hate that I get, I get a hundred X more love. Yeah. Like yeah. every day in the street, mm-hmm. people running up to my car. Stop in. This yeah. Stop in photos. I always say that taking a photo is the, is the new version of an autograph. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> That's it is. good. It is. And I don't fucking get tired of it either, man. Yeah. Like when some kid walks up to me, he's like, can we, t- can we take a photo? Yes, son. Let me get up. Of course, we can. you know, because the kid's like 14 years old or something, 14 to 45, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm always happy to do that. It, it, it's good for my heart. This yeah. is new to me as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm going through this with people that yeah, follow me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fucking and, sick. Yeah, it's super sick, bro. I could, bro, I could not even sit here and act like it's not cool. Yeah. We had it happen this morning, man. We were pulled up to the Starbucks and the valets. They're real good to me because I buy them coffee. Okay. Because they let me park next to the Starbucks. Smart. Yeah. Super of smart. Of course. Oh. And, I, and I genuinely appreciate them. Yeah. So I buy them coffee too. Amazing. It's fucking coffee, bro. It's like 10 extra bucks. Who cares? And also, they're tight as fuck. So that, that's like a, you're yeah, anchoring yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. that. They're thing. in front of my building and the, and the Starbucks <laughs> is right here. I pull up to Starbucks this morning and two young guys, yeah. uh, I would say they were probably 20. <laughs> they start freaking the fuck out. <laughs> And I'm like, is my car on fire? Like, like is the yeah, G wagon yeah. on fire? Pablo, look, because Pablo was in the vehicle with me. Okay, he runs the J Waller winch channel, mm-hmm. and he's like, no. And they start running up. He rolls the windows down. Can we take a picture? I'm like, yes, of course we can take a picture. You have like 
five or six, 10 out of 10 sitting out of Starbucks. Yes, bro. You just ran up to my car and made, made it look like I was fucking LeBron James. Yeah. Yes. Can you bro, do that did, every yeah, day? Yeah. <laughs> Come back in 15. I'll take it. <laughs> Y'all just get her attention real quick. Hang you know, on. It's yeah, really boys, funny too. Yeah. I always, always fuck with waiters because like, let's say you're sitting somewhere and there's a girl at the table. Mm-hmm. And she gets up to pee, right? Yeah. They'll wait till she leaves to come up to the table. I'm like, gee, it'd have been a lot better if you'd have came when the chick was here. <laughs> you'd have made me look cool. Like, yo, what the fuck? Your timing, shit. No, they do it on purpose. Yeah. Because they don't want to interrupt, right? You're I'm like, like, I don't even like, I don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> it's such but, a thing. And then yeah, when I, it does work, you're yeah. like, oh, yes. Oh, you're, bro, you're getting yeah, tipped today. Yeah. Like, the other, like, when, when Thomas was with me at uh, Chica. Uh, the other day and and they brought the sh- the chef like sent his business card and they were talking about like I was telling you they were telling me about all the different stuff they're going to do if I come again I was mm-hmm. like one person to see this is Thomas and Pablo it's <laughs> dumb this is the fucking this is also <laughs> fuck yeah lame <laughs> Super like, like, can we redo this real quick? Yeah. Just like in 20? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And that, yeah, that's yeah. one of the things that, that you're well known for also, you know, the late ladies and, and, and being able to that. Yeah. But it's because not only the status, the lifestyle, you're around, the, you're the, and as you said, the granite, right? Yeah. You're, you're already in the top 10%, 10% you know, if not in the top 1%, you know, a lot of guys, especially because it's not only just money. A lot of guys think of that. It's everything. Yeah, we do this. It's everything. We talk about seven. I, I came up with this concept called the seven pillars of status. Seven direct pillars like social media, fitness, your location you live in. If you lived in, you know, Denham, fucking Louisiana, you, you know, you could be like. I just love that you call it Denham. What is it? It's called, well, we, call it, we call it Denham. Yeah. Den- <laughs> we Southern, so, but yeah. It's the yeah. Aussie. It's the Aussie. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure Sterling would probably say that too, you know. Bro, I'd be offended if Sterling said Denham at this point. He's already <laughs> he's been to my house too many times. Like, fuck you, Sterling. <laughs> uh, there's just so many of them. And so for, for you, for your progression, you obviously said that the war room was great to, to level up, but you've been you've been doing this for, for years, right? And you said you haven't had any game or you haven't been quote you know, quote unquote formally trained. What 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 has that journey been for you? Because you're someone that does have it. You got the you got the style, you got the Bro, gift, you got the gift. It's the, the same thing that I had in Jubilee. Mm -hmm. It's an honest vulnerability, being myself and being completely okay with whatever the result is. Mm -hmm. Like, I have heard people in games say that you need to not care about the outcome. Yeah. I think that if you work on yourself as a person and you become that person that's gonna be okay with whatever happens because you're okay with you, Mm -hmm. it comes off of you. And that's that kind of, that that thing that you say radiates. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm okay in my own skin mm-hmm. completely. If if I wanted to do a business deal with you, even if I was nervous, mm-hmm. it wouldn't matter because I'm okay with myself. And if you turn me down, the only thing I would have been upset with myself if I was too much of a coward to ask. And yep. that's how I treat mm-hmm. women is that if I see a girl and I want to speak to her, mm-hmm. it's not because I think of some slick shit to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because I'm okay with her telling me no. I'm going to give her full eye contact. I'm going to physically be very present. Mm-hmm. You know, and she's gonna feel it. You yeah, know? And, it, it, and I've had women tell me that, and it's not because I'm the fucking snake whisper of like yeah, yeah. vagina. It, it's really just <laughs> well, the same to- thing that would make a guy like me is normally the same thing I think make a girl like me. If they can get, if they can see some of this in you, and, and you're being honest, and you're looking them dead in the eye, and you're telling them, and they know you mean what you're saying, then yep. it's hard not to like a person when they're genuine about it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to trick you or neg you or tell you you're kind of cute. Bitch, you were fucking smoke. And yep. I'd be mad at myself if I didn't tell you. Yeah. Or, hey, man, I really respect you. We should try to find a way to make money together or whatever. Yep. You know? Um, What's that? On- that, that? That's good. I like that. That's yeah. that honesty. That's uh, like you. You yeah. know, when they say just be yourself is a bit different because most people don't know who they are. But you know exactly. who you are. I know so who I am. Playing your yeah. card, the you card. Right. Right. And have the vulnerability to say, listen, if, if there's something you don't like about me, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But I have to answer to myself. And in and, and, and my heart, it told me to talk to you, man or woman. Yeah. You know, for whatever reason that I want to talk to someone. So if they don't accept me, I'm still okay with me. Mm-hmm. And I think if that can shine through and you've done the work for that to shine through for yourself and you know you've taken care of what you have to take care of and you know the person you are and you love yourself, then it's never going to be a problem. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know any good pickup lines like, <laughs> i get accused of this too they, they'll they be a hit you. video 
Jay Waller don't know shit about game. I'm like, bro, I've been watching your channel, G. Like, I, I don't, you know. <laughs> what are you talking like, about? This is another video I want to be watching. Bro, they'll have dudes like, hey, like, I, I, there were some videos in the very beginning that were about girls, and I hated it. And me and, <clears throat> me and Thomas would argue about it all the time. I'm like, dude, I don't want to talk about it. And I still don't like the dating shows. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. Like, I'm not like, I don't like have this vendetta where I'm trying to dunk on some fucking 20 year old girl. Yeah, like, yeah. I just don't. Um, I, just I, I, I always stick up for Myron Walt. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Because I think their work is very important mm -hmm. to show some men that are probably a little bit more on the simpy side yep. how to save their own life. Mm -hmm. Myron and Walt are very important. But in regards to like doing the big dating shows or me talking about how to get chicks, I got no game for you. I, I don't have a pickup line for you. Yep. I don't have say this and then she'll say this. Now, mm -hmm. I'm charming as fuck. Yeah. But it's not like this formally trained thing. It's just not being fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's not like it's not like I have this script written up where it's like, okay, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And when she does this, I'm gonna trick her. And it's like, ah, oh, keto. I had sex yeah. with you. No, bro, <laughs> it's just not. What's that clear intention that you have? And yeah. it's unwavering from like if you get rejected, well it's you know, it's just yeah. what it is what it is. Bro. Like, it, well, it doesn't change the fact that you're beautiful. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Boom, gone. You made know? her day. Yeah. I hope it made your day. It's yeah. something I'll also tell her. That's and that's the win that you have to have. A lot of guys, let's say you go up to a girl in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. It's like they're trying to trick her. Yeah. It's like, they're, hocus, it's like hocus, their dick hocus. is behind their back and they're going to like, yeah. ah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, just, hey, mm -hmm. you look really pretty in that outfit. You yeah. know, or, hey, you know, I like your shoes or, or whatever. But, well, yeah. but mean it. But fuck, actually, mean actually it. do mean it. Yeah. yeah, don't tell some bitch with some busted shoes. She got pretty shoes. She knows you're lying to her. Yeah. And then another thing I would say is like, I like to try to compliment somebody on something I know they had to work for. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. girl, you got killer legs. I know you're squat. Dap. Bro, yeah. talk to her. Like, bro, dap her. Bam. Because normally it's like every guy's trying to sleep with her. Mm -hmm. I say this all the time about women. Yeah. <laughs> I did not mean to talk about women. I broke your mic. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to talk about women so much, but you no. have to understand it from their perspective. Yeah, yeah. The second they get boobs, every man in their life is trying to sleep with them, mm -hmm. and they're just dodging dicks. Just well, yeah, it's from from on the, the ropes. Well, it's, it's something from the age of sixteen to twenty-four, yeah. eighty-five thousand times. Yeah, I believe it. I yeah. believe it in person, so, just in person, not online. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're that one dude that steps inside punching range and mm -hmm. says, "Hey, I really, I really can see you've been working out hard. Good for you. You look great." Boom, dapper up and, and like walk away. Amazing. I'll do that at the gym. Yeah. If I think a girl smoke smoke, mm -hmm. and I know I'm going to see her more than once, I'll just in, I'll just in and out I'll, with that. Boom. In and out, bam! In and out, in and out. Yeah, in don't and need out. nothing. Eventually, she knows my name, and she and she's thinking in her head because she's dodging all these dudes in the gym, right? Yeah. Just throwing punches at her, and eventually she's going to be like, "Wait, he's really tall, really handsome, really attractive, and very nice to me." And she drops her hands, pop, mm -hmm. got her. And it was her idea, not mine. Yeah, you know. No, it's good. I think I, I think it's such a subject that's so. I first came up with uh, the pickup stuff. Did right? you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I never trained it. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so I, I I came at and because my my story is a little bit interesting because uh, I I came and I got really really good really really quickly and then I joined a company that one of the most famous dating companies in the world. Oh, uh, um, RSD. Yeah, how was that? Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Yeah, I heard he's a nice guy. Yeah, like I, only, I literally saw Owen literally last week. So yeah, he's awesome. Brandon told me he's cool. Oh yeah, cool as fuck. And that's where I met Brandon and from. Funny, that. right? Yeah. Very funny. funny, comedian, hilarious. comedian, funny. Yeah. And then I saw the glass ceiling, and then I saw like, hang on, that a dude like that can make me illegal. Yeah. It, it would be illegal for him to teach me that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to know. They, they, yeah. But but business gives you that too. The gift of the gab. Yeah. Figuring out things in your head, how to how yeah. to execute, how to say the right thing when you've got all the pressure on you too. Right. Business will teach you that. Right. So one of the things I want to want to also segue to was, you've you've made a company that's large, very large. Yeah. Where did that start? Where you know? We, uh, I talked to a couple of people and they said, ask him about the first, the very first construction gig, your very first one, because right. that that shows you the progression that you've had over the last twelve years. It depends years. who you talk to. Like it almost sounds like you might have talk to someone in my office so it depends are you talking about the first one for the company or the first one ever ever for you okay so for me ever ever would have been packing panels for my stepdad in a backyard somewhere on a 30 by 40 and they're like smoking mm -hmm. weed and and drinking butt heavy on the roof mm -hmm. and i'm like 12 13 years old 
and it's in the south south louisiana it's a hundred something degrees out there <laughs> Dripping. And yeah, dripping, sweating, stinging, itching. Just like South Louisiana could be miserable because it's mm-hmm. humid also. And these panels have been in the sun for days. Yeah. And so you pick them up, and I'm not even big enough to pick them up. So the wind blows or, or just anything wrong with the weight distribution. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> like, rolling along. You're already, you're already, you I wasn't smoke. big enough to pick them up, right? <laughs> and I'm like putting my face against them to push them against the building. And then you pick them up. And then they take them and pull them on the roof. But the problem is it's a big piece of sheet metal. And if they drop it, it's like decapitation. Oh, yeah. So I'd like, raw, like when I knew they had it, I'd just like run away real quick. I mean, cause like <laughs> they, they were, they were doing substances that are not OSHA approved. Yeah. Okay. I remember one time I got on the roof with him and he was supposed to tie me off. Oh, no. Yeah, so we took a piece of, uh, when you catch fish in Louisiana and you don't have like a boat where you can put like a live well, you have this little thing called a str- like a string where it's got a piece of metal on it. Mm-hmm. And you put it through the, the fish's mouth, through his gills, and you can have a string of fish. Okay, yep, yep, You yep, keep yep. doing it again and again, throw them mm-hmm. in the water, and it's like tied to a, like a stick or something. That's how you keep your fish alive. Mm-hmm. He used one of those and tied it to my belt loop on the roof. <laughs> I don't even think it would have worked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've never said that on the internet. Yeah, so I'm so we would break some OSHA laws when I was a kid. Then I um, think you go to Dubai and you see that Dubai's the same. You see There's some, some cr- you see some crazy stuff, but no, like the shit, the stuff the we stuff were, doing were doing in the late '90s uh, were way more podunk than that. <laughs> no safety helmets in. No safety. Ha- <laughs> Hell no. There was no safety helmet. There was no sunscreen, bro. <laughs> oh, shit, I, yeah. My little ginger ass would get so burnt. Yep. Doing metal buildings and backyards, and then so the insulation too. So mm-hmm. the insulation that goes in there, they, oh, yeah. they call it itch. That's his nickname. Is itch. Yeah, it's all over you. And then mastic, you do the mastic for the panels. It's all over your hands. Sometimes you get it in your teeth, it's stuck to you. It's it's on, bro. It's, it's just a whole thing, man. Yeah, metal building, metal guys that do metal buildings. It's some hard work, man. Mm-hmm. All the trades, man. Just people. Do Massive not, respect for them, bro. They're the most unappreciated people on the planet, in my opinion. Them and veterans. But yeah. These guys that build, that build, build, like, people just don't understand what it takes mm-hmm. to make a building, like, appear out of nowhere. I think everyone should be required to do some sort of building for the, con- the country. Man, it, it, dude, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. It, it would definitely keep people in check and ha- let them have a real understanding of, what, like, what it takes to sit in air conditioning. Yeah. And then, and then you know. they have an attachment to it. Yeah. I know I did that. And. Yeah. They can look at like what they're getting paid versus the actual work they're doing, which is Wild. humbling as fuck. Yeah, I can tell you. <laughs> Wild. It's super crazy. I think for, it's 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 crazy for man. almost like, decapitation. This that hot, but, bro, and, oh. and nobody cares. And yep. and they're just driving down the road that you built, or, or in a building that you built, or doing whatever they're doing. And it's just like those guys will never, in my opinion, those guys will never get enough love and respect and pay. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and you're so close to them, too, you know, with, with your company and yeah. stuff. And, and even the real estate stuff, too. I'm sure you see some some crazy buildings. You're like, wow, I don't know how they did this. Right. It, well, you, it's you, just you, the day-to-day stuff, man, just, yeah. to get, just to get a road down, mm-hmm. you know. All the things that, like, people are driving down the road. They don't understand. They got plumbing underneath them. There's electric. I mean, yeah. there's things going on, pump. So. Well, I just came back from Mexico City, and all that yeah. is kind of, like, up from the i'm like yo there's like 50 electric guys there i'm like yeah oh, you don't see that shit here you know yeah man i just people people really don't even understand what it takes to make a society go particularly when it comes to construction so can't give those guys enough yeah and they're not stupid either no they're, they're, they're not they're, dumb they're, it yeah. take it takes it takes a lot of intelligence to to, to be able to even do that yeah, yeah what well, to get well especially for like uh, big gcs you know to have a project manager that can build a building like the one we're in right now Mm. You know, you have to make a lot of moving parts work. It's years and yeah, years. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's very stressful. I can imagine. And no wonder you love it, too, because, you know, you speak passionately about it. Yeah, so, it's just it's just been a big part of my life, man. Yeah. So. Well, you know, you said some, some, some legacy. One of the things we also got into was um, you talk about... Uh, for the guys, here you go. Do you think do you think it's possible for a man to get married and still have that drive in them, in today's society especially? And if so, has there been someone in your life that you've seen the perfect combination of having this partner or this marriage that still kept that drive, or is it not possible in today's society? Do you think? I think that it depends on the person. Okay. What's most important to me is that. 
a young man develops himself in a way in which he has choice. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people live and they lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I get you. That's one thing that I can tell you. I I don't want for anybody that follows me. I just don't want them living a lie. I uh, I met with a a pretty well known person just a couple of days ago about this very subject, and he's in that weird position where he loves a girl, but he he wants to you know do other things. Mm-hmm. And what I told him was, is like, listen, man, you can do whatever you want, but what, tr- what you truly want in your life is choice. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have choice and you choose to lie instead, it's going to be much worse. And so mm-hmm. I don't ever want a young man to take the way I live my life and say, I got to live like Justin. Yeah. You know, if a, if a young man feels in his heart that he wants to be with one woman or he wants to be with a man or he wants to be with a transsexual or he wants to be with a goat. I don't care. I truly don't Mm -hmm. because I think it's different from everybody. Mm -hmm. What's not the same for everybody is the amount of choice that they have in their life. Mm -hmm. Do they get to live truth with full conviction and and not have to hold any skeletons in their closet? That's truly what I want for people. And in my life, I like to tell the truth and I like to say it on the internet too because it's a Mm pre-qualifier. Because all I need is just a few people that really, truly love me for who I actually am. Yeah. And I think very, very many people don't have anybody that loves them for who they actually are because they've not yet said who they actually are. And that is a haunting way to live your life. I want choice. One of the things that I see a lot of them is when they come out of the relationship, they're lost. They've lost themselves. Yeah. And that's because they've been obviously living that lie that you said. Right. Well, and I'll tell you another problem with that, too, is like particularly for a man is that I don't want to placate to anybody else, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and so it's her. It's and it's not because I want this, but it's going to be her that loses her identity after losing me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make for damn sure. There's an A side and a B side in every relationship. Yeah. Sometimes I play the B side. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that, but not in my relationships. If I'm not A in the relationship, then go find. Then go replace me. Statistically. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. And and that's and I don't say that to be manipulative or anything. Like I'll actually directly say it just like that. Mm. Because I would much rather us have an understanding and have a hard conversation. You know what I get most often from women, especially mm. when talking about other women? I just really appreciate that you told me the truth. You know what I'm saying? I can handle that. I'll bypass it. And yes, I break they'll tell me, they're like, I break all the rules for you. But you're also not a liar and you're also a really good human being. Yeah. And so by just coming out and just saying it, in negotiation, Chris Voss has something he calls the allegations audit. Yep. And it's much like that scene in 8 Mile where he raps about everything that he could possibly rap about. Mm -hmm. Here I am. Hey, not sorry. I like coming out the closet. I like women, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you otherwise. Yeah. Right. And if I love you enough to tell you the truth when you know other dudes are probably just lying to you, telling you what you want to hear, and I'm better than them, you're going to leave me for a man you love less than me to go see a dude that's going to lie and cheat? Like, and let's say some guys yeah. don't because yeah. I believe that's true too. Mm-hmm. I need to stand up for those guys. <clears throat> there are some guys that might not feel that way mm. or maybe they feel that way and they don't do it and maybe that's connected to some kind of religion or something. I'm not yeah. here to shit on that at all. Yeah, yeah. Like, I want people to have choice. That's all I'm looking for. Yep. As far as like how I help people, like build yourself up in a way where you have choice in your life and don't be lying to people about it. Mm. That's it. And if you can do that and you're not having to hold your breath and be somebody you're not, lie to yourself or lie to others, then I feel like I've done a good job helping somebody out. That's, that, that's a mic drop. That's a good one. That's yeah. really, really good. And that's going to help a lot of the guys that listen to this podcast, that exact thing that you yeah. just said. Going on, segueing onto another topic. The the boys the, the the brothers yeah where do you, where do you think it's lying because I'm I'm a little scared where it's where it is yeah. I want them to get a fair trial I I want them to get it where do you sit because you're a lot closer to them you're a lot are they they doing well are they they're obviously doing well you know they they've got their personality they're doing well mm-hmm. they're getting to spend time with people that are very close to them fantastic. They are buckling down on their faith. Mm -hmm. They're buckling down on continuing to work. And the freeing part for me 
and I, I would suspect the freeing part for them is that they know that they've not done anything but help humanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did they say something that might have got turned on them from eight years ago when they were joking around yeah. in the context of a conversation? Yeah, probably. Like everyone in Very the world. Clear. That have it. Yeah. Very clear. But if, if you want to talk about a clean individual, line the Tate brothers up with a thousand other men and investigate them the way they've been investigated. It, it's mm-hmm. the thousand other men you should probably be worried yeah, about. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, they are people just – Andrew and Tristan are a great example of what I was just talking about with choice. Mm-hmm. And being able to be one of the very few people in the world that can actually say the things they say yeah. because they can live with so much conviction because they are actually who they say they are. Yeah. And so if they had something that they had done that they would not want somebody to know about, then you might lose some sleep at night, right? Yeah. But I can tell you for a fact that that's not the case for either one of them. They both sleep like a baby. Yeah. They're both built for war. Yeah. They're ready for war. Mm. And if war comes, they'll fight. And they'll take their car scars and go right along the road, and they'll become even more triumphant for it. Yeah. You know? Talk about some guys that got dog in them. They got mm. some fucking dog in them. Yeah, they got You know some. what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and that's one of my favorite things about them. So worry about the situation. Even I do, yeah. right? But they can't help but be at peace in their heart. And every time I talk to them, I know that's the case because yeah. they know what they've done. They know if they've not done. And so there's nothing really there other than people trying to take back the hearts and minds of young men. Yep. You know, I think they got Socrates for that. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. And so he's just going through what great people go through. It's just a little fire, man. Yeah. I suspect that he'll continue to go through fire throughout his career. I don't think it's over. I don't think they're locking him away. They don't have anything to lock him away for. Yeah. I think they're going to try to charge him with something, but probably just for the monetary benefit and to say, hey, we kept him for a good reason. Mm. But it's certainly it's certainly not going to be anything on the allegations that are out right now. Yeah. Most of that has already been dropped. Well, for, yeah, as of yesterday and stuff yeah. like that. Well, even to dull the the influence or whatever they're trying to do. And oh yeah, <coughs> it was pretty good timing. Yeah? yeah, they had emergency meetings set up and they called them in. Oh yeah, a bit, yeah. yeah, very and very dropped some charges. Good timing. Yeah, it is probably some good timing. Yeah. I'd be trying to shut Andrew too up too if I were them. <laughs> yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, I ain't think that out all the way. <laughs> <laughs> why why is it that um, the information? is now the information to help people is now being weaponized almost in what way taken down um you know uh put it misconstrued put on different things when, when it's on the wrong agenda bro yeah okay it's on the wrong agenda if it, if it were on the right agenda mm. m- much like some of the things that are going on you know mm-hmm. around children and being exposed to certain things that they shouldn't be exposed to mm-hmm. it's on the right agenda whether it's right or wrong or not isn't in question it's about what team you're on and what and what agenda is getting driven like can we distract people with the fact that we're printing out a bunch of money by creating a bunch of hate can we make the white people and black people hate each other Mm -hmm. can we make you know christians really really upset about what's going on at these parades or in their schools about some of this trans stuff when it's just such a small part of the population it's not even like on the macro it's not even really that relevant in fact Nobody really has time to hate somebody for their sexual orientation, unless it's Christians hating me. <laughs> Keto. <laughs> you know, but nobody has time. Yeah, no, yeah. Nobody truly has time. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, I do not have time to care if a guy is gay mm-hmm. at work. Does he do his job? You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's all about Or whether yeah. he's black or Hispanic or Puerto Rican or Chinese or Japanese or Russian. Yeah. Bro. Does the work Finding good down. people is too hard. <laughs> Finding good friends is too hard. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Brandon Carter talked about this the other night. We're sitting at the Heat game. Yep. We're pissing off these two old white guys in front of us, dude. They're like 100. Like, they definitely own yachts. Because we're sitting on, like, the fourth row. <laughs> you know, like, I could spit on the players from yeah, where we're yeah. sitting. <clears throat> and we were just pissing these old white guys off. Because every other word is pretty much an F-bomb. We're at a basketball game. Yep. yep, and, it was, yep. and we're losing. Okay? So... He kept turning around and glaring at us, and I'm like, dude, like, he doesn't even he doesn't even understand, you know, the situation. Like, we're just young guys. But, you know, I'm white. Brandon's black. Nobody gives a fuck. Brandon is a fucking winner. Yeah. Brandon Carter is a winner. You think I give a shit that, like, like he's a black guy? Yeah. Actually, it just makes me look cool. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. He was a cool but, black guy. Yeah. But also, I make Brandon look cool because I'm a cool-ass fucking white boy. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, nobody cares. Yeah. Because once you get to a certain level, 
Like people don't even understand your problems anymore. Yeah. You know, I can tell Brandon about problems I got that only Brandon would understand. I can tell Tate about problems I got Mm -hmm. that only Tate would understand. Like me, Tate, Brandon, or Tristan, or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know? That upper echelon of problems. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get there, you really realize that, like, it's really more socioeconomic than it is base, Mm -hmm. uh, race, or gender, or sexual preference. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I'd go, if, if, if a dude, let's say a guy was, let's say, homosexual. And I thought he was a cool dude, and I thought we could make money together. And he didn't like cross any boundaries with me. I go, he gave with him. Yeah. Like I don't, I'm not so worried about like somebody like taking or giving me my manhood on the internet. Yeah, That's the yeah. first thing they try to attack. <laughs> you know, oh, you're weak. You're not, bro. Whatever, dude. Yeah. You know, whatever. I'm looking for good human beings in my life. Hmm. You know, people like I was telling. Um, this kid on the way over here, he's a real, a real world kid. Okay, yep. I put a challenge out for somebody to pay their parent next month's uh, mortgage. Kid did it. I called him, and he asked me a question about whether he should try to do business with his brother or one of his friends. Okay. And yeah. I always say fuck time and fuck blood. And the reason I say that is because I'm not looking for people that. I'm supposed to like because I've known him 20 years Mm -hmm. or that I'm supposed to be close to because we're technically blood. I want people in my life that my soul aligns with. And if I can find people that are on the same mission as me and my soul aligns with them, even if we have small differences, I don't have time to care about simple shit that does not matter. Yeah. You know, you could you could be a. I don't know what a Chinese lesbian purple haired, you know, like whatever. (laughs) But if you have common sense, yeah, and we're on the same like level wavelength, I could sit and talk to you for hours, you know, like all the Chinese purple hair in your DMs now. <laughs> yeah, bro, Dude, trust me, I get plenty of purple hair in my DMs. Oh yeah, I can yeah, imagine. Yeah, I get plenty of plenty in my DMs. I, I I can I to to look in your DMs would be a little scary. Also, yeah. too, and awesome. I've seen I've seen it's kind of like having an OnlyFans account, actually. Well, I can imagine. I've seen one celebrity's one, and I was like. <sighs> it is like yeah. when you don't want to see something that you see and you're like, I really shouldn't have seen that. So, um, a lot of what, what's yeah. in my DMs you do want to see, but it's just, it's too much. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's like the, the the girl that you've been after and she's DMing him oh. and you're like, <clears throat> oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, all right. I had a kid send me a message like that. He said, <laughs> you're bro. He's like, every girl I go to message follows you. He sent me a message, but I don't know. It's, it DM, you know, DMs and Instagram and all this stuff is so interesting because when I was growing up, you couldn't like reach out to somebody you want to talk to like that. Yeah, no, no, no access. You yeah. know, and now it's just hard because you don't see the message. Yeah, you know, I always tell guys that sometimes too is like I try to say it on podcasts a good bit. It's like we get so many messages a day that if you send me a message like this morning, it's pushed down so far, so quickly. Yeah. It's just super hard to get to. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's like, you, if you think I'm like reading it and closing it, I'm not. It's, it's, it's next to impossible. Unless you're saying, can I ask you a question? If you ask me if you can ask a question, I will delete it. You're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the other one? Can I, can I, uh, uh, something about your mind? What, uh, can I pick your mind? Oh, that yeah, one. Can oh. I pick your brain? Uh, it's like, yo, yeah. never, never, never. I can, um, yeah. Or can I take you to a steak? I'm like, I, I'll pay. I'm like, gee, I can buy a steak. You know, <laughs> like, do you have, like, do you have a real estate deal? <laughs> Cause I'll buy you the steak. Yeah. Yeah. That's what a lot of people, they just bring something. Yeah. You know, and it's not even cause I don't want to talk to him or I think I'm better. It's just like, I can't mess it. I can't answer them all. A, gr- a great example this morning. I tell these guys, you know, in the, in the Twitter DMs, Oh, I'm this, I can do. Th-. He sends me, he go, here's the last five videos that you put on YouTube. Here's the thumbnails that make it better. That's badass. And I'm like, gee, yeah. hired already. Yeah, hired, yeah. And because he took the initiative yeah. and he did it. Yeah. And that's one of the things that people don't do. They can't, can't like, you know. Oh, I have a guy on my real estate team named Avi. He doesn't ever want to go on camera. Uh, he's kind of shy, I guess. And I don't know why, because he's a tall, handsome kid. He's like 20, 20, 21. He came through the inbox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and asked me what kind of deals I was looking for, and I answered him. And we're about to close on one deal. He's going to make $75,000, like, boom. And he's got four more teed up. He's going to make, like, 200 something k this year. Crazy. Smart. Yeah, Very he found smart. me through YouTube. Wow. He's, finding me, he's finding me pocket deals in Louisiana. Adding he's finding value. me deals. He's, he knows that he's, 
he's literally looking up the property on Google Maps, finding owners. Like he's just doing it, man. Yeah, yeah. And Probably get a job out of it too. I mean, he's like get two hundred. He's getting paid, bro. Yeah. yeah, no, he's part of the family, bro. He's been to my house, yeah. like, and he can come anytime he wants. Smart. Yeah. Bring a deal, Avi. <laughs> Yeah, well, but no, he's also a good kid, you know. So it makes your life easier. I mean, that's what you want if you want to give value. You make their life a little bit easier. Yeah, just yeah, find a way and then take take all that hustle you got in you and, and make the guy some money. You want to be friends with somebody, help them make money. Mm. You know, a lot of people don't like that. I say that I don't give a fuck. Yeah, because like life's already too short, and I don't even think you're being a good friend unless you're pushing your boys to make money and you're not making money together. Yep. Like in a lot of ways, what we're doing right now. Is, is making money. Yeah, 100%. Because it's your followers will see me. Mm-hmm. I'll pull clips and use them. Mm-hmm. We're working together to grow together. And I feel like growth is where all the happiness is. So if you can do that with other human beings, because we're very social animals, right? Oh, yeah, of course. So if you can grow, feel like you're getting better at a higher level of life with somebody you actually like, what better thing could there be to do? Yeah. All me and Tate talk about is work stuff. Yeah. Really? Yeah. When we're all together, the kid asked me this morning, I'm like, He's like, what's it like hanging out with Andrew and Tristan? Well, it's like smoke cigars and hookahs and coffee and work the whole time. Yeah. And, and it's like. And you whoever, love it too. Yep. Whoever doesn't do 25 push-ups is a pussy and everybody just starts. <laughs> Half of us don't even have a shirt on when we're all hanging out. We're sitting around a table. <laughs> yeah. You know, coffee, hookah. Okay, I'm going to do a podcast. Okay, now he's going to do a podcast or just whatever, right? And, and, and train yeah. and work out together. That's it. You know, me and Tristan will go work out or me and Andrew will go work out or all be in a hotel room on a car rally working out talking about, you know, hey, is the website done? Boom. Like curling. Yeah. (laughs) You know, you know, and then outside cigars, coffee, same thing. Boom. Phones. It's it's always it feels like you're getting better all the time. Yeah. You ride some cars every now and then. But the fun part is feeling like you're growing. Yeah. And you're doing it with people you really care about. There's no better. Yeah. There's not a better existence. Yeah, so. with your boys. They always say that. You guys are always pushing that, which is so true yeah. nowadays. Now more than ever, I think. Young men don't know what it's like to be loyal. You know? They don't know what it's like. You know what Andrew really put back into me that mm-hmm. I wanted for so long is like yeah. trust. Because I've been snaked so many times in construction. Okay. It was hard. And being exposed to trust at that level allowed me a freedom to let go of some things and some businesses. Mm-hmm. That ha- that I believe that the said individual in business that I gave that trust to when they really knew I trust them mm-hmm. performed 10x better mm-hmm. because yeah. trust is speed. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. they would never snake you because you've trusted them so much. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the war room is really about. You know, like I was telling, I was telling somebody on a podcast the other day, I sent this war room guy I never met 285 grand yeah, yeah, really. to, buy, to buy a mobile home park. Yeah. Would not happen if it wasn't for Never met him too. Yeah. That's I'd cool. never met him. Wild. I know him now. Yeah, I know that check comes in every month, <laughs> like clockwork. Yeah, it's out of a little field in Lima, Oklahoma, Ohio. It is what it is. Yeah. So um, a lot of gr- a lot of growth can come when you can trust and like give give yourself to people fully. Mm. You know, then it's ride or die. Then you're blood brothers, right? Yeah. They don't remember that blood brother shit. Now it's like y'all like it's all on the internet, but <laughs> get the uh, knife, you know. Just yeah, bro. Just, yeah, just stick yourself and like rub some blood. You know, <laughs> probably not. Not advice. I'm not yeah, a doctor. No, no, probably <laughs> yeah. would. You know? yeah, yeah, y'all could probably just do some activities together outside of the internet. But uh, <laughs> that's some shit we used to do. Yeah, yeah. Spit on it. Remember that? Yeah, spit on it. Shake. Yeah, bro. Spit on it. Oh, bro. If you spit on something and, oh, and shook hands. Dude, that's that's a contract. Oh yeah, that's that, a serious that's contract. A date, that's yeah, serious. that's a contract at recess that you're not getting out of, bro. You spit on it. Yeah. So. Just, and then Pinky Promise with girls. Oh yeah, that was good. I'll see you after school. Yeah, Pinky Promise. Bam. Cool. Out. That's that's your that, tips. I'll bring that old school stuff back. <laughs> I'll, the gentleman game. I'm gonna teach y'all how to write a yes or no note. <laughs> you remember those? Yeah. Yeah. A little after school. Well, that's where gentleman game comes from, you know. I got a girl the other day without talking to her. It was so funny. I just did it because I was being a smart ass. The, was it the eyes? No, no, no. What it was is we were at the – Thomas, you remember this. We were at Starbucks. Okay. And I was sitting right outside, and the whole wall is glass. Mm-hmm. The girl was sitting right on the inside. She was pretty. I was really just doing it because the guys were there. I was just fucking around. Yeah. And I tapped on the glass, and she looked up, and I drew a heart in the – uh in the fog on the window she thought it was the funniest thing so she's busting out laughing her friends laughing they're giggling they're big yeah. girls right and i typed i think we're in love now and i put it against the glass and then she wrote back and then she gave me her instagram 
I didn't even look it up. I just did it because the boys were there. But <laughs> they don't understand this old school shit. You used to, have to do this yeah. shit in person, bro. Yeah. You know, so you had to be sly about it. Is that a pick? Did I learn that on a YouTube channel? No, it was just there. Yeah. Don't be a fucking retard. Take the opportunity or yeah. make, make the opportunity. Yeah, make the yeah. opportunity. Be funny. Like, she knew I didn't care. She could she could clearly tell that I did not care if she didn't like me. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, did. tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Heart. <laughs> we're in love now. Yeah. <laughs> What's your Instagram? Bam, done. Pablo's like, what the fuck? Where'd you learn that? I'm like, just now. I made it up. Yeah. Hey, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What, what line did you say? I didn't fucking say a line. Uh, yeah. And I blinked. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, don't stare at her. <laughs> so how many breaths did you take before yeah. you did the yeah. heart? Yeah. You're like, bro. Well, uh, you, know, you know what I think it is? Because back in the day, we had to call the parents yeah, man. On the phone, Mr. and Mrs. Smith or whatever, Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. You know, Johnson, yeah. can I speak to Sally Holm? Yeah. yeah. Can she talk? Why? Why do you want to speak to her? Like, right. And we used to get tested straight away. Or or you would hear them pick up the other line. You know, like there's, yep. there's that little click, yeah. that little bitty click, and you're like waiting for it. Yep. Oh, bro, you had to watch out, bro. And, I and did the, most of my work outside okay, you know, you like the f- by the trampoline or something. Yeah. That's, yeah. how, that's how Justin learned his yeah. skills. You got to get them. You got to get them on your turf. You know, <laughs> that phone call shit. Mate, fantastic. Last question that we always end with every guest. It's been a pleasure, and it's been, uh, you know, very informative. I think the guys are going to get it. Now, the question is: If there's one thing in the world you could change, what is that one thing? I think we do too much fighting one another. And I don't I don't think we do enough coming together and figuring out why the fuck we're flying through space on a rock. You know what I mean? And I don't mean I don't mean to say that in regards to like dissing religion. That's not what I'm trying to do. It just seems that there's a huge wealth distribution in the world and there are people that don't even have clean water. You know what I mean? Mm. And we're certainly producing enough to that for that not to be a thing, right? Yeah. But instead, we fight wars over territories and over shit that doesn't probably really matter. And then we sanction the fuck out of each other. And we fight between the races and the genders. And I have way more love in my heart than I do hate. And I'd like to see the world change in the sense of maybe we can put some of that down and help people that actually need help that don't have the life essentials. And... If that happens, I think the world would be a much better place if we could all be on the same team. So that's what I would change. Perfect. Yeah. One of the better answers we've had to that. Yeah. It's amazing. No pressure. What would you change about the world? <laughs> I don't we've know. Maybe everybody quit being a dickhead to each yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I, all the people watching, Mr. Waller's stuff is everywhere. Type in Justin Waller on anything, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Rumble, everything. Yep, you're going to come up. You're going to come up. You don't even need to know the handles. You type in his name, he's going to come up. Where can the people go to learn more about you? Where can the people go to send you more real estate deals so that you can? Right. <laughs> well, the, my Instagram is Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, Win W-I-N, Waller, W-A-L-L-E-R, 7. And my YouTube is J Waller. From there, you can find me on Twitter, Waller7J. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for I've today. I enjoyed it, man. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you.